Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Godly Truth once again. The question was asked in my previous video, could the coronavirus be used as the starting point for the mark of the beast system? Well, the answer to that question is a big fat yes, due to some hard facts that I will share with you. Without a doubt, the coronavirus is extremely dangerous and is life-threatening and we all need to be extra cautious about it. While this virus is potentially lethal, but it is nothing but a smoke screen for the Mark of the Beast system agenda. As I shared in my previous video that the power that be must create a crisis in order for them to have their way with the population, which is what the coronavirus is all about. Notice how they are destroying the economy. Check out these headlines here, my friends. Morgan Stanley, Goldman declare global recession underway. Goldman Sachs Group and Morgan Stanley economists join the rush on Wall Street to declare that the coronavirus has triggered a global recession. The global economy is heading for its worst year since the financial crisis, Bank of America says. Financial market imploded again on Monday as increasingly alarmed investors feared that the global economy could experience a downturn rivaling the cataclysmic recession after the financial crisis a decade ago. Now this is being done by design my friends in order for the mark of the beast agenda to work. You will soon see a new digital economy system be put in place for the power that be to be able to control buying and selling as effective as possible to fulfill Revelation chapter 13 verse 17 which say, And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Are you still scoffing? Check out these irrefutable articles here. DOJ want to suspend certain constitutional right during coronavirus emergency. The Trump Department of Justice has asked Congress to craft legislation allowing chief judges to indefinitely hold people without trial and suspend other constitutionally protected right during coronavirus and other emergencies according to a report. While the ask from the Department of Justice will likely not to come to fruition with a democratically controlled House of Representatives, they demonstrate how much this White House has a frightening disregard for rights enumerated in the Constitution. This sounds like the Inquisition back in the 12th century. Pope Pius IX in his encyclical letter of August 15, 1854 said, the absurd and erroneous doctrine or ravings in defense of liberty of conscience are a most pestilential error, a pest of all others. Most to be dreaded in a state, he said. The same Pope in his encyclical letter of December 8, 1864, anathematized, called anyone a heretic who believed that. Those who assert the liberty of conscience and of religious worship, and also all such as maintain that the church may not employ force. All these guys care about is global domination and they will do it by any means necessary. Even if that puts your life in danger, even if they have to kill anyone to gain global domination and that's exactly what they will do. Now you understand why the Pope of Rome hate the American constitution because it stands for liberty of conscience. And what our government is trying to do now is to suspend our liberty of conscience, which is what took place in the 12th century in the Roman Inquisition. The Inquisition was established by Pope Gregory in 1233 as a special court to help curb the influence of beliefs deemed to deviate from official church doctrine. People were not allowed to believe anything other than what the Catholic Church teaches. The late Pope Jean Paul II apologized for the Inquisition back in 2002. He said that the church should show penitence for accepting methods of intolerance or even violence in the service of truth. And now they're saying 
Inquisition was a mistake, but legally justified, claim Vatican official. This bloodthirsty Catholic belief system has three primary reasons as to why the Inquisition was mandatory. The first reason is that justice demands it for certain offenses. Every injustice creates an imbalance, they say, and justice demands that the imbalance must be corrected. The second reason they have, the church has thought that the death penalty is expiatory. Expiation is an attempt to redress through penance and other form of modification. Catholics are taught that we must achieve expiation either here or in the cleansing fire of purgatory. As Pope Pius XII said, it is reserved then to the public power to deprive the condemned man of the benefit of life and expiation of his fault when already by his crime he has disposed himself of the right to life. Third, the death penalty can sometimes support the common good. Therefore, if a man be dangerous and infectious to the community on account of some sin, it is praiseworthy and advantages that he be killed in order to safeguard the common good. And guess who else is pushing the common good agenda? Pope Francis. The common good has become global. Pope Francis called on nations to work towards a global common good Thursday, particularly in confronting climate change, human trafficking, and nuclear threats. In the current situations of globalization, not only of the economy, but also of technological and cultural exchanges, the nation state is no longer able to procure the common good of its populations alone. The common good has become global and nations must associate for their own benefit, Francis said, noting that some nations today have a spirit of opposition rather than cooperation. The Pope called building the common good of humanity a necessary and essential element for the world balance. Friends, the common good, the climate change or global warming, whatever they want to call it, they all ties in together for one primary purpose, and that is Sunday observance. Pope Francis told us in his encyclical named Laudato Si in paragraph 237, On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Friends, the Bible tells us that the papacy is the first beast of Revelation chapter 13, which rises up out of the sea. And that beast is a blasphemous beast. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 3, the Bible says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of name of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now we need to understand what is the definition of blasphemy. Blasphemy has two applications. Number one is when you claim to be God, and number two is when you claim to be able to forgive sin. In the book of John chapter 10, verse 31 through 33, Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man, makest thyself God. We also read in Luke chapter 5, verse 21, And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? The Catholic Church has committed blasphemies in the past in multiple occasions. Now, they're making it even easier for those who's been denying the word of God concerning the papacy as the beast of Revelation chapter 13. Now listen to this article here. Catholic Church forgives sins of those stricken by coronavirus. This is claiming to be able to forgive sin. 
The article goes on to say, The Catholic Church on Friday, March 20th, granted forgiveness under certain conditions for the sins of the faithful struck by the new coronavirus. A decree published by the Vatican also covers healthcare, workers, and those who pray for their well-being. Relatives who care for the sick family members are also forgiven. The conditions include the sick saying a certain number of prayers or following important celebrations from a distance. My friends, the coronavirus was introduced to humanity for three primary reasons. Reason number one is for depopulation. Number two is to destroy the economy. Number three is to facilitate the impending mark of the beast system. It is a deception and Jesus warned us about it in Matthew chapter 24 verse number four. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. I pray and hope you were blessed by this video. Per fare pace con la vita. I have repeatedly offered $1,000 to anyone who can prove to me from the Bible alone that I am bound to keep Sunday holy. There is no such law in the Bible. It is a law of the Holy Catholic Church alone. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Catholic Church says, no, by my divine power I abolish the Sabbath day and command you to keep holy the first day of the week. And lo, the entire civilized world bows down in a reverent obedience to the command of the Holy Catholic Church. T. Enright, CSSR, in a lecture at Hartford, Kansas, February 18, 1884. The Catholic Church for over 1,000 years before the existence of a Protestant, by virtue of her divine mission, changed the day from Saturday to Sunday. The Catholic Mirror, September 23, 1893. Question, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church in the Council of Laodicea AD 336 transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Peter Geierman, The Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, second edition, 1910, page 50. Question, have you any other way of proving that the church has power to institute festivals of precept? Answer, had she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Stephen Keenan, A Doctrinal Catechism, page 174. There is but one church on the face of the earth which has the power or claims power to make laws binding on the conscience, binding before God, binding under penalty of hell fire. For instance, the institution of Sunday. What right has any other church to keep this day? You answer by virtue of the third commandment. The papacy changed the fourth commandment and called it the third, which says, Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. But Sunday is not the Sabbath. Any schoolboy knows that Sunday is the first day of the week. I have repeatedly offered $1,000 to anyone who will prove by the Bible alone that Sunday is the day we are bound to keep. And no one has called for the money. It was the Holy Catholic Church that changed the day of rest from Saturday, the seventh day, to Sunday, the first day of the week. T. Enright, CSSR, 
in a lecture delivered in 1893.